Welcome to this video episode where we are going to take a quick look at the late Roman military tunic, the tunica militaris or the castrensis vestis as it may also have been called. What are my thoughts about this tunic type? One of the things we often assume is that we can transpose the dimensions and proportions that we have from the tunics from Egypt onto basically every type of garment, every type of tunic found throughout the 4th century in the Roman Empire. Of course, we have to question this assumption. We do see on the one hand a lot of artwork, mosaics, etc., representations in the codices that show quite wide-bodied tunics. However, uh, we see also a lot of representations that um, allude to very narrow and, and more close-fitting garments. So we often find the debate in reenactment circles that tunics are not wide enough, so that tunics ought to be much wider given the specimen that we have from Egypt, that mainly military reenactors should consider wearing those really wide body tunics. What I would like to question in that regards is that we have contemporary textual sources that speak of military tunics having to be slimmer and tighter fitting to the body so as to accommodate the soldier's movement better. Now, what does that leave us with? It leaves us with a few alternatives, a few different possibilities in terms of reconstruction reenactment. What I'm wearing here now is my pagana, that means my civilian clothing that I took from my civilian life into the army and that is not army issued and that I may use um, on a day off or when I don't really want to seem too military. The only military sort of attribute I'm wearing right now is my kingulum, my belt, my red belt that I would use and would take also after my military service life into my civilian life and continue to wear as a symbol of my former um, belonging to the armed services. As I'm standing here, I'm wearing a pagana. It is not specially wide, it is not specially long. Um, the sleeves are quite narrow. Uh, this tunic here was hand woven by Circo Galtz uh, and it used to be a bit wider, it used to be longer, but with, with, with hand woven fabrics, uh, it depends really how it ages over time, um, it can shrink. Of course, after weaving, it's washed, etc. But after multiple washings, after several years of service, the, the fabric just shrinks. So what you can see is that my, my sleeves are a bit shorter now than they used to be. And it's also a bit shorter here on the knees than it used to be originally. What are my suggestions for um, different reconstruction possibilities for such military tunics? This is the most wide bodied of my reconstruction attempts. It has, like most of my tunics um, here, a uh, sort of belly waist tuck. It has the underarm slits for practical reasons because we have a lot of iconography of potentially military figures that wear their tunics with the arms um, tied together behind their neck for working purposes, etc. And I find that also very, very useful in most of my daily chores or in, in, in several occasions. It's also very good for um, aeration, ventilation. Um, it's, it's all wool, so uh, that helps a bit with uh, body temperature control. Now, um, this one is quite long. It reaches down till uh, mid of my calves. And as you see, the arms are a bit short. That's uh, due to the overall uh, width of the fabric. Um, we have several uh, representations of soldiers in late antiquity also who seem to have um, tunic arms that are quite of kind of not, not quite as long as, as, as other tunics that we see so they're quite of kind of short and um, it has its advantages in, in a military context. We see it a lot of with special forces or operators these days as well that they just have it their, their um, battle shirts uh, a bit, bit further up. So I just kept it that way for now. I might make it a bit longer in the future. We will see. I'm gonna experiment with this one. Now, how is it gonna wear with a belt? So, as we can see, there is a lot of material that needs to be tucked in and then um, uh, arranged. Uh, if I don't pull the entire fabric up, then the tunic is quite long. It reaches almost a hand and a half below my knees, which is um, 
yeah, not really in correspondence with most sources that we have. We want to be somewhere around half a hand below or above or on the knee exactly with our tunic lens. So let's do that. Let's see that we get this length. Front and up the back and on the sides. Now we get this uh, sort of colpos this overhanging uh, fabric here on the sides. There's a lot of uh, representations where we can see that this was indeed the way those tunics were meant to be worn, especially by military personnel and um, also by civilians. So, it feels quite nice. I have a lot of air. I can move around very nicely. Um, and it also feels nice the way the, the length is. You can rearrange it if you don't really pay attention much to how it folds and it rearranges it can it can look clumsy as with the previous tunic this one is a little bit on the longer side it's not quite as wide as the, the, the former one um, it has longer arms very narrow long arms here um, it has the underarm slits as well it doesn't feature this time a waist tuck it is in one piece and it is from slightly thicker wool dyed with mather this time. One other difference it has to the previous tunic is that it has those slits on the side. And that is basically it for most of it. Together with the belt, it is slightly similar in, 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 uh, to the previous tunic. You need to be watching out where to um, assemble the mass of the fabric and how it fits on you and if everything is sitting well. Um, with a little bit less uh, tucking up the, the fabric, it sits comfortably, com comfortably um, around the knee. So that's pretty much for me, in my experience so far, the, the best fit. One thing that's really striking me with this design as a bit disadvantageous is the tightness of the arms. So here I really made a point of making the arms ultra tight. And the result is that when, when I move a little bit like this, I can feel the tension from my shoulder blades up to the elbow. It feels a bit restricting. And also when I'm making these kind of movements, it really kind of pinches around here and feels also a bit uncomfortable and restricting. So that's something you need to keep in mind for when you really want to do the, the very, very tight arm kind of uh, design and look. This tunic is currently my favorite one in terms of material, design, proportions and uh, feel. Um, it does not feature a, a waist tuck. It is in one piece. It has been hand woven and uh, dyed with um, wood in Russia. And it's a very, very good quality. Um, the arms, the length, everything here, the width is pretty good. I hit the sweet spot here in terms of the arms and how tight they are. It doesn't feel restricting. The material, the wool, is also quite flexible, so it kind of stretches a little bit here and there. Um, also here, arm movement not restricted. I have, again, those slits here under the arm, so we can just give it a demonstration. Slipping out here off one arm. Something that's a little bit annoying with the very, very narrow sleeves is that to, to get your hand through. So, um, I think that's why most of the specimen that we find uh, intact do have rather than tapered arms really straight arms so just um, uh, kind of fixes itself a little bit around here your forearm but your hands free to slide in and out anyway so here we go just make a quick knot here around my neck it's a bit tight here so you can consider um, opening it a bit more. Now back into the arms and as we can see these are also quite tight but um, they are still very much um, not too tight for movement and don't restrict me anywhere. Now with the belt this tunic is about half a hand below the knee which then makes that uh, for not having to pull as much fabric up over the belt in terms of getting the tunic to sit roughly a little bit on the knee or a bit above the knee. So,
When putting on the belt, what I usually always do is to first gather the fabric at the back so that it's about symmetrical and I don't have like large bits of fabric around here that are strange. And then I pull the fabric slowly up, which makes then for this kind of V-shaped uh, pleats here in the front. And I'm checking that everything is approximately symmetrical and fitting and that most of the pleats that I do have are at the back. Then also, also a little check always if you're not having the back part too high up and it's, it starts sticking out like that in a, in a strange fashion. It looks a bit goofy so you also kind of always need to keep aware of how it looks all around. And also remember here are the sides that's where you kind of need to juggle around in order not to have uh, strange shapes all around. So far this tunic is my favorite uh, of, my, of the models I created for my military use. It fits me quite well. It's sitting right on the sweet spot uh, for me uh, between having volume and uh, being presentable and fashionable uh, without armor and um, being tight enough and not too long so that when I wear it without a belt under my armor, it doesn't protrude too long and uh, it isn't too wide and it doesn't create funny shapes. So for me, this one here hits the sweet spot in all regards. And um, I think I will use this kind of uh, model and these dimensions also for future reproductions predominantly. This here is the tunic where I took the information that um, military tunics ought to be narrower and shorter the farthest. As you can see, it's still not totally tight fitting. It has some width to it, but it is not as wide as the other tunics. The arms are kind of narrow, um, but not as, as narrow and tapered here at the end. You can see that there is some space for better getting in and out. They also have the underarm slits. They don't have a waist tuck, but I'm considering adding one um, for the reason that um, this tunic is the one that I was wearing on the 350 kilometers march uh, in 2021 uh, along the Danube Lemus. And um, as you can see, it, it got quite strained. This is also hand woven and uh, plant dyed wool from, uh, that I got from Russia. And um, the, the, the strain of the armor and the, the constant sweating into it and holding the arms in, in, a, in an angular position has changed the shape of the arms. The arms are not straight any longer, they're kind of crooked like that now. So they're a bit shorter and the entire tunic got shorter. The fabric kind of just shrunk um, over the course of the march. It was always a bit short, so it always was meant to be just ab above the knee without a belt. So as that when I wear it with armor and without having it belted, it would still have the same length as a belted tunic. So. That was the thought behind it. Um, now that makes for when we wear this tunic with a belt and without armor, that it's of course considerably shorter and less wide than the other tunics. Again here, trick, assembling the fabric at the back, then kicking up the arms, and then you got roughly your final shape of wearing it. You can see there's considerably less fabric around here, no no, no, no big colpos. Um, there's less uh, pleats here in front and at the back. And it's quite a bit shorter. So I do feel like I'm wearing a miniskirt here. Uh, do feel a bit like it, it might be a bit too much on the short end for what we do see in iconography. Um, but keeping that in mind, there is iconography, as we can see where soldiers do wear quite short blue and red tunics that are undecorated like this one and that seem to be quite narrow. So I would say it is up to us how literal we want to take those representations. We know also from um, Germanic uh, find contexts like the Torsberg tunic for example that um, shorter and more narrow tunics were de facto in use and probably more of a fashion in central, northern and western Europe. So that um, it is totally possible and imaginable that Roman soldiers on those borders would 
also use such a fashion, such tunics, um, such a concept um, in daily life. So this is, despite it being short and for me personally feeling a bit too short, um, I think totally, be, totally, uh, you can make an argument for it. So here we go. It is quite lived, aged. I mean, this tunic is not even a year old, not even a year old. And I've only used it on one March and a handful of Renekton weekends and it is already quite aged. So um, yes, there's another argument for maybe using less fabric for those kind of tunics that you would wear for dirty work in, in the barracks or on a mission or under your armor because they will get deteriorated quite fast anyway and there's quite a lot of fluctuation or maybe you repair it and it's, it's just not a nice garment as such, it's just something that you wear in your daily work. Red, the color of Mars, the color of war, uh, blood, your blood stains are getting hidden also if, if you happen to get wounded in these tunics. A lot of stuff that speaks for um, such garments to be quite widespread in the Roman army, maybe not as a uniform or a modern concept of a uniform, maybe not as a rule, but very likely as a, as a very widespread convention. That's what we can say from texts and from iconography, as we've seen already in several videos on this channel. Now here is how the most literal interpretation of a military tunic that I just presented um, fares with the entire equipment, as I have it thus far. So we see it can only, it looks out a, a little bit um, over the, under the super malice here, and it doesn't protrude at all from underneath the rest of the, the thing. It actually always gathers a little bit. It gets pulled up by the felt and um, the chainmail. So it's a bit awkward and I don't really know how to, how to solve this problem. So since we in essence have one, one felted thick tunic over a, uh, a thinner tunic here um, and the chainmail and the shape of it like here is playing a role in, in, in how everything moves together. Uh, it creates a few problems. So we, we really, I think, have to find out or I have to find out uh, better ways to work with the gear. Um, it's not self-evident. If you're just standing somewhere in a reenactment on a, on a weekend on a field or something, you don't march for very long distances. You don't necessarily feel that these minor things are nuisances or are, are something to uh, to really look into, but when, when you walk for long distances, when you do stuff on a daily basis, then uh, how things are sitting, where, where they are sitting, becomes quite uh, a, a challenge if it's not really right. So what I find is that the fabric with this here tends to be gathered as I walk along over here. It's all here like this then. And I have not a lot of space at the back to move properly. It was less so, it still was like that, but it was less so when I had the front slits. However, um, with the longer blue tunics that I used, probably they would go to here and I would need a sort of belt to keep them up. So then there's more material here and a bit more bulking here. I find additional belts underneath an armor when you're wearing an armor are a bit of a nuisance and cumbersome so that's why I like the tunics that have a length also when you wear them without armor that uh, or without belt that's not going much below the knee without belt so that you can wear it comfortably like this so with this setup I have my wrists quite free which is nice for cooling down because especially when you get warm a lot of, of, of your cooling can, can happen in this area. That's why we also see a lot of special forces today uh, crumpling up their, their sleeves and their arms to have the, the further section here uh, free and, and, and not uh, somehow encumbered by, by tight sleeves. Um, although this is just a minor detail and a hypothesis. So um, also all the rest, it works fine. Any fighting stance. And one thing, that I, I, I kind of wonder about are those side slits that we find because when I, I, I stand like this, obviously here my leg is exposed up to here and this part in front is closed. And uh, if I have a, a middle slit, then my leg 
will never be exposed like that, but will always be covered by the chain mail. So we gotta ask ourselves why side slits instead of front and back slits. I haven't found it out so far. <laughs>